The past doesn't matter. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. It's not me who says that though. It's modern women and, even worse, society itself. No wonder the decay of modern society is real. It's not uncommon to hear women say that men should care about this and that instead of what men really care about. What a shocking realization, right? And here I thought we lived in a time when all opinions mattered the same. No, that's a narrative. You see, if you're a man of standards, morals, values, and all that good stuff, you'll always come across people trying to tell you that you're a very bad person, that you should be more tolerant and try to teach moral lessons to you. Thankfully, many men are showing their middle fingers instead of submitting to the opinions of stupid people who don't care about men's well-being or preferences. Check this out. Do you understand why guys would have a problem with a, with a mom with a high body count? Though? Do you understand the logic behind it? Where it comes from? I think it's insecurity. Is where it comes from. It's like, do they really want to have a woman that is just a virgin? Because she's not gonna be good, and she's gonna have no experience. They don't need you to be good, though. That's so boring, isn't that boring? boring? That's so boring. I'll tell you what. That's it's not so boring. like just. That just sounds transactional to me. You know what's so funny about this topic about sex and women? It's so funny because as a man, I seem to have more knowledge about female anatomy than most women. There's one thing I know growing up with um, around women, having sisters, is that the woman's anatomy is so delicate that she could get infection simply from just sitting on the toilet, simply from sitting in the wrong place, maybe even using her underwear more than once. Like just the little things. So imagine 10 different dicks going in there. <laughs> that is crazy. There's nothing boring about a blank canvas if you're an artist. If you know, you know. Destiny's wife, or rather, what can I get out of this simp type of woman, is the perfect example of why not to get married. In today's video, we're delving into the dangers of marrying 304s and why men are increasingly rejecting these chicks without thinking twice about it. Stick around because I'm sure you're going to love this one. But before we go any further, let me share the comment of the day. Shout out to The Grumblers. He said, Doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, your past never dies. And you, my friend, are absolutely right. Please don't forget to reach out to us by email to claim your $5 for that comment of the day. As usual, guys, I'll pick one comment from each video. It may be the funniest, the most liked, or one that touched me. So don't forget to leave a comment, and you may be our next winner. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons too as it helps a lot. And now, back to the video. I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up. I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. Let's start today's topic with an insightful post that breaks down why men don't want to marry promiscuous girls. I'm pretty sure you'll agree with a thing or two. We don't hate sluts, we just recognize their low value. One of the common criticisms of the red pill philosophy is the supposed contradiction that results from our simultaneous disdain for sluts, but the willingness to still have sex with them. This contradiction is false, and the result of failure to understand what's really going on. First things first, I couldn't have said it better myself. Let's keep it a thousand, man. A lot of dudes out there have their dicks out for business day in and day out, but they don't hit every punani out there without a condom. Sex might be good for sure, but impregnating women, getting STDs, or having kids out of wedlock is a huge L. Plus, imagine the woman leveraged the family law system to make you pay for child support and alimony. If many men don't commit and become players, it's not because men are evil. It's because the current dating marketplace doesn't promote chivalry, chastity, modesty, and all the values that decent men uphold. So, in this situation, many men must make a decision. For example, they can become players, smash and dash here and there, avoid attachment, have rosters of chicks, etc. In other cases, they get a passport, move out of the US, and find foreign women who really embody the values they look for. Let's keep on reading. What is a slut? A slut is commonly defined as a woman who has too many sexual partners. However, 
this is a superficial perspective. What really makes a slut so despised is their disregard for their own inherent value and the fact that they give it away so freely. Women are the gatekeepers of sex, something inherently valuable to men. Men have built and destroyed great empires and many lives in pursuit of the sexual pleasures of beautiful women. We assign, often foolishly, great value to sex. We view it as something worthy of conquest, of effort, and acknowledge that women have the right to withhold it for only the men who have proved themselves as deserving of it. In this sense, we view sex as a marker of merit. A man who has ample sexual access to beautiful women, whether he's amassed great wealth, chiseled his body into a physical masterpiece, or simply honed his linguistic and social skills to their peak, has clearly done something to deserve the bounty of sex he reaps. A slut, however, disregards all of this. We expect a woman to evaluate men carefully and be discriminating in her choice of sexual company. Instead, a slut gives that value freely to many different men based on fickle feels and fleeting emotions. In doing so, her sex becomes less valuable because it's given so freely. Why would we work hard for something that's given away easily to so many? In America, everything is like women are so hypersexualized here. Everything you hear, like women actually have shame in other countries, like not to like put pictures of themselves, revealing everything on their Instagram. Like there is a giant sway from like this culture having like modesty and just having like a healthy relationship with shame to this like shameless culture where like if you don't agree with everything that I want it's because you're a terrible bad person and it's like no sometimes you just have fucking shit ideas and like some of these girls they're hoes and they're like no I'm just like a sapiosexual or whatever fucking crazy term they need to make up to like justify the fact that they just want to get fucked by a lot of bunch of dudes every single person needs to be accountable for their behavior their actions how they dress if you're looking for that if you're looking for that one night stand and you're dressed like you want that one night stand and you're putting that out there, do what you want. You're a grown adult, go right ahead. If you're not looking for that and you're dressed like you're looking for that and somebody assumes by nature of what you're looking like that you're looking for that, don't be mad about it. Be rational about it. Think about it. Say, well, what message am I putting out there? You don't like the message you're putting out there? Change it. You can still be sexy. There's a difference. So what I'm saying is, yeah, society can be, you know, sometimes with this messaging confusing this, but it's not just men that have to be accountable for their actions. It's women too. We all need to be accountable. We all need to take ownership of what we're bringing to the table and what message we're putting out there. Women know very well what kind of message they're sending at all times. So look, if they get all that attention and the men they hook up with are out only for sex, there should be no animosity towards players, chads, tyrones, and all the men who just want to have something casual. At the end of the day, these chicks who dress in a certain type of way are looking for the thrill of the experience, proving something to themselves, cheating on a boyfriend slash husband, or posting some story on social media to bash their exes. Do you want to be used as a human dildo, get an STD, or be ghosted? No. You're better off all alone, honestly. In the realm of relationships, many men, at least those with common sense, who don't let their genitals govern their behavior, hold certain qualities and traits in high regard when seeking a life partner. These qualities are seen as the cornerstone of stable, harmonious, and fulfilling relationships. But you know, modern women think that this is some sort of patriarchal, outdated approach, and we should become more quote-unquote modern. Now, Let's see the values you, as a man, want in a partner. This ain't rocket science. Modesty stands out as a virtue that signifies humility and propriety. It reflects a sense of self-respect and reserve, fostering an atmosphere of mutual respect within a relationship. Partners who appreciate and honor each other's boundaries often find that modesty paves the way for a deeper connection based on understanding and regard. On top of that, Instead of hearing a woman say that she's some sort of diamond that has to be in the spotlight to shine, she reserves her body for you. She ain't a woman like Doja Cat, Cardi B, or any other bad influence who shows her body for everyone to see. Chastity is another value that holds a special place in conservative circles. It goes beyond a simple act of abstinence. It represents purity and self-discipline. 
Individuals who prioritize chastity often view it as a commitment to the sanctity of marriage, a promise that contributes to a strong foundation for their future family. I mean, think about it. Women have it easy to get a good hubby. Some cooking, listening skills, sexual discipline, and being cooperative. Sure, being beautiful is a plus, but most men would rather deal with an attractive woman with no body count than a hot as hell type of woman who's annoying as fuck. Discipline is also a quality that signifies self-control and the ability to make sound decisions. It's often associated with reliability and responsibility. Partners who exhibit discipline are generally seen as dependable and capable of maintaining a structured and organized life, essential for the stability of a family. Modern women, though, have no discipline because they don't have any sense of duty or responsibility. If they find a bigger and better deal on social media, they feel free to wreck the home, get half of the man's money, and live an over-the-top lifestyle at the expense of the ex-husband and the emotional stability of the kids. Then these women want you to be altruistic and think about others before you prioritize yourself. To hell with that narrative. Just like she worships her feelings and agenda, you put yourself first. You ain't marrying a chick who's all about her fleeting emotions and unhealed trauma. Now, let's shift our focus to the value of cooperation, which plays a pivotal role in building successful relationships. Partners who embrace cooperation are often seen as team players, willing to work together to overcome challenges and achieve shared goals. This spirit of collaboration aligns perfectly with values men with common sense uphold, as it fosters a harmonious household and strengthens the family unit. Modern women prefer being combative, bossy, and all that stuff that doesn't bring any value. If you deal with objections, at least get money in exchange for that suffering. I mean, just think of salesmen who make top dollar. That's cool, but once you get back home, the last thing you want is to deal with the stupidity of a wife, or rather, a burden, that makes your life a hundred times more difficult. Another factor that men value is, well, traditional gender roles, which hold great significance for many. Men, as providers and protectors of the family, for sure, but only as long as women are caregivers and nurturers. These roles provide structure and purpose within a relationship, emphasizing each partner's unique contribution. This ain't about a war of the sexes, this is about cooperation, and surely a hoe will not cooperate. Once problems come through, you'll easily be replaced by a man she had on the contact list before you even came into the picture. Instead of talking things over and having the emotional awareness modern women want you to have, they're hypocrites who can't live up to their own narratives. Strong family values are also paramount to those who uphold these ideals. Partners who share a deep commitment to strong family bonds and values often find common ground in their dedication to raising children with love, imparting values, and nurturing a strong moral foundation. Of course, a 304 will not have any strong values because she's governed by her own punani. So if a chad comes her way, she'll smash with them, and once you find out, she'll either say it was a mistake, or even worse, blame you because you didn't fulfill her needs. That's the clown world we live in. I agree with her, you can't date whores. And, uh, <laughs> and here's why, but here's why. But wait. Because whores don't become housewives. Okay. You can mess all. around with them. I'm not. You shouldn't. I'm not saying you can't. <laughs> but I'm saying theoretically, you know, if that's that's what they're there for, then okay. But he's saying because I, you know, it's a valid point. A lot of these guys they want to fuck around with these whore type women, and then they say, hey, wait a they second. They want to turn them into They want to draw a line. It doesn't work like that. Once a whore, always, always a, whore. a whore. You and I both agree that men running through women is detrimental to our society. Yes. The argument that I would make is in years past, when there were stronger patriarchal structures over society, there were decreased rates of men running through women because we had greater amounts of tradition in society. This whole liberation thing that is intimately tied into feminism, I would say that feminism is largely to blame for so many women in our society getting run through because earlier in the conversation, Destiny was making the point that nowadays we live in a society where a lot of women, both liberal and conservative alike, they want to go and build their careers and they want to go and enjoy their lives. And a big part of that enjoyment of their lives involves being 
free in their 20s. That thing that you dislike, that is a fruit of feminism. Yeah. And it's one of the things historically that patriarchy protected against because traditionally speaking, it was a father's job to protect his daughter's virginity and her purity and all that kind of stuff. That's like, that's a good no. thing for society. That's a this liberation stuff that's burning women is a fruit of feminism. We want men to stop having sex with women, but you should not tell women to stop having sex with men. That's all women really mean. Now, let's go back to the post. What about men? This is where it gets interesting. Women, because they're the gatekeepers of sex, don't value it as highly as we do. Instead, they place the most value on commitment, the one thing men have control over. This makes the white knight, the friend zoned, the nice guy, the male equivalent of the slut. Why? Because this guy comes to her aid and offers valiant defense, resources, and protection based solely on the fact she's a woman and has a vagina. I mean, really, man, if you're not a cuck like Logan Paul or Steve Harvey, you're really good to go. The simp culture is so prominent that being a man with a strong frame has become more valuable than ever before. Let's keep on reading. Deep down, women inherently know that they have to earn a good man's commitment by being feminine and fucking his brains out to the point he can't get enough and wants to commit on his own accord. Just as men want to be the one that bag that tight ass and perky tits, women want to be the one that bag the high quality guy. It's why, at the beginning of the relationship, the sex is plentiful and naughty, and things like breakfast and bed are common, as the woman is putting in the effort to earn that commitment. In contrast, the white knight slash nice guy offers all the commitment without making the woman prove herself first as a quality woman. In doing so, he reveals that his commitment is of little value since, surprise, it's given so freely to any woman who walks by. If I don't know you, yeah. mm. I owe you absolutely but you nothing. Know what the I, let, me, let me speak. I owe you absolutely nothing of as course. a man who doesn't know you, of right? Course. So what happens is the simp culture within the Western world has become a norm. Yeah. So men will say, okay, cool. And this is why I speak to men. Men, I'm going to speak to you, right? Because if you are out here with a lot of money, you may have a lot of money. Stop giving pretty women. Yeah, the, uh, stop giving pretty women attention because what happens is you will lose your resources, you will lose your money, you will lose your time, and what will happen is they will take your time, effort, resources, all the things that you built up, and they'll be on to the next. In reality, this is very simple. When it comes to relationships and commitment, men must recognize the value of their attention and the importance of being discerning in their choice of a life partner. Understanding one's worth and the significance of the commitment they bring to a relationship is fundamental. It's a principle that revolves around mutual respect and ensuring that your investment in terms of time and emotions is a purposeful and deliberate choice. She better be a keeper or her wifey to get your attention. You understand what I'm saying? That said, when considering the pursuit of committed relationships or marriage, it's essential to remember that your attention and commitment hold intrinsic value. It's not about playing mind games or withholding affection, but rather acknowledging that the act of investing in a relationship should be a thoughtful and meaningful decision. By freely giving your attention without evaluating the qualities and values of a potential partner, you risk devaluing the commitment you can offer. In the quest for a life partner, if that's something you're into, the concept of selectivity becomes paramount. Just as you desire a woman who enhances your life and complements your values, women also seek partners who contribute positively to the relationship. This process involves being discerning and considering not only physical attraction, but compatibility on emotional, intellectual, and practical levels. Effort plays a pivotal role in building successful and lasting relationships. The early stages of relationship often involve both partners actively working to deepen their connection. This concerted effort is a sign of mutual interest and commitment, signaling a willingness to invest time, energy, and emotions in each other. Paying attention to how a potential partner approaches this phase can provide insights into their commitment to building something meaningful together. Avoiding the white knight or nice guy trap is equally important. While the offer of commitment may seem attractive on the surface, it's essential to remember that genuine commitment is earned over time. It arises through mutual respect, 
shared experiences, and a profound understanding of each other's values. Rather than hastily offering your commitment, ensure that your partner genuinely appreciates and respects the significance of your commitment within the relationship. If she's just looking for your attention because she can't stand being alone, she doesn't deserve your time, money, and overall, the things you've built up. Stay strong, guys. As always, I wish you tremendous success. Now it's your turn. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Remember that if you leave the best comment, you will get five bucks. Thank you so much for watching. If you found value in this video, hit the like and subscribe buttons, ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on future uploads, drop a comment, and share it. See you in the next video, guys. Till next time.